All right. Well, good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Tracy Harrison. I am the Associate Director of Admissions here at Emory & Henry College. And today I have several of our current Emory & Henry parents here from various different walks of life and various different uh, where their students are at in college. But they're here to answer questions, anything that you all might be curious about in the process that they went through. So I will go ahead and let them each introduce themselves and then there is several of us in here and I do request that you stay muted, but do put your questions over in the chat. That way it's easy for us to sort through your questions and make sure that we don't miss anybody. So I'll let Rebecca, you can go ahead and start. All right, hi, so I'm Rebecca Buchanan. I currently have two students at Emory and Henry. Uh, one is a freshman and one is a junior. So my daughter, who's a freshman uh, right now, came in undecided, but she is currently leaning toward a possible major uh, in French to be a French teacher. Uh, and then my son, who's a junior, uh, is an exercise science major, uh, and he is planning on going to medical school. Uh, my daughter is involved in, uh, in the adventure team and is loving that, and my son is a baseball player. And I will mention, I'm also an employee of the college in that I teach uh, in the education and the health and human performance department. Okay, I'll go next. Hi, I'm Joy McCoy. My daughter, Abby, is a junior at Emory & Henry. Uh, we are from Pennsylvania. She is a physics major and a mathematics minor, and she is a member of the equestrian team and rode on the national championship team when they won the national championship um, the fresh, her freshman year. Okay, I, I guess I'll go next. Uh, I'm Jim Harrison. I, I have uh, two children at the college uh, as well. I have a, uh, a freshman, uh, Ryland. She is, uh, she actually took a gap semester. She'll be starting in the spring. So, uh, and she's undecided. And I, I have a son uh, that's a junior and he's uh, environmental science and biology. I'm also an employee of the college. I've been, this is my 23rd year at the college. I direct the outdoor program, and I also teach in the English department. Okay, um, I can go. My name is Marcy Hughes. Um, my daughter is Shelby Hughes. She is a sophomore. She is a BFA musical theater major, so she um, spends a lot of time over there at uh, the MGA. Um, yeah, so that's us. We're from Lynchburg, Virginia. Um, I'm not sure if I'm next or not, but I'll jump in here and introduce myself. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Tracy Peary. I'm the Director of Human Resources here at Emory and Henry College. I have four children. My oldest one is a junior here at Emory and she's been here longer than I have. I also have a son that just graduated from high school last year and he's gonna be transferring to Emory next year. Uh, my daughter came in as an undecided major and she worked at the Van Blissingen Center and worked with those employees to determine what her career path was going to be and through the assessments and wise counsel of those great employees she decided on business as her major and Spanish as her minor and my son who is going to be transferring to Emory is going to be doing the nursing program when he gets here so welcome everyone glad to have you today hello I'm Tracy Wright I'm Tommy and uh, we have a sophomore at Emory and Henry. Um, her name is Janae, and she is um, a triple major. She's majoring in economics, um, business, and peace and social justice. And um, that is po highly possible due to the wonderful faculty there at Emory and Henry who really work with the students. In addition, she's involved as um, a volunteer and peer mentor at the ID Center, which is their inclusion and diversity center. 
Um, she's a member of a sorority. She's a part, a, a senator, and actually the, um, has the office within the Student Government Association. And um, she was an orientation leader, and she is a teaching assistant for one of her economics classes, or not the one that she's in, but for one of her economics professors. So um, she's very involved in Emory and loving her Emory and Henry experience. Okay, thank you all so much. So I know one of the things leading into your student looking at colleges, um, is there anything that you all wished that at the time that your student was looking at colleges, is there any sort of advice you wish someone would have given you or a question you th wish you would have answered during that process that looking back would have been super helpful to know? And they're, as they're thinking of an answer to that, um, for our participants, you all are more than welcome to type your questions over in the chat. Um, this is definitely a very informal conversation, so they are here to answer any questions that you all may have. Um, this is Tracy again. I can't, I have worked in Hariad education for a number of years, so I, I think that we kind of had an advantage um, in terms of no one's questions to ask and things to look for. Um, my husband is a college president at Southwest uh, Community College. So, um, and this is our second daughter going through a college experience, but I would just encourage you to um, try your best as parents to really let this be about your student and let he, him or her um, really seek out the institution that really best fits who they are. Um, for me, it was, I try really hard to let them be the ones doing everything from the application to um, getting their materials in and all of those things. I think it's important for us as parents to be fully involved in the process, but at the end of the day, and I say this more from not the parent standpoint, but as a college administrator who has counseled and worked with many students over um, my years of tenure, your student is gonna perform much better and be much happier and accomplish the goals that he or she has for himself and that you have for them if they are at the institution that is the right fit for them. I'd like to add that, you know, just to give kudos to, to Emory and Henry, we took uh, two weeks off one summer and just booked out college tours. So we went to, we, we flew, we drove, we rented cars, we took trains. So we went all in a two week period. We went to Tulane, University of Memphis, Vanderbilt, NYU, UPenn, um, William and Mary. And uh, ultimately we, a week or two later decided, or decided yeah, you know, we, we're, we're here, I'm close by, let's go take a look at Emory and Henry. And, Janae had pretty much narrowed down to, to the University of Memphis, I believe. And when it was all said and done, and we went over to Emory and Henry, and it was even on a spring break. And so there wasn't a lot of motion and activity on the campus, but she absolutely loved Emory and Henry and just fell in love. And she said, everybody else is kind of out of the ranks now. And so it's Emory and Henry. So I think that says a lot for the faculty and the staff that day, that particular day, that catered to, to us and gave us the tours and helped sell Emory and Henry. I think the one thing that I, I discovered but not didn't know it right in the beginning, my son who is older than my daughter went to Penn State. So went to a huge university and um, they don't speak to parents about anything even though you're the one paying the bill, they don't speak to you. I found out pretty quickly at Emory and Henry that everyone is very, very helpful um, with anything that you have. Um, and as a parent, they will speak to you. Um, I didn't know that from the very beginning, but it's, it was a great thing to discover. And so something I wish I'd known from the very beginning. One thing that I might add that's helpful, regardless if it's Emory or anywhere else, is if your students have an opportunity to take dual enrollment classes, 
uh, that for both of my children, taking the dual enrollment classes have been very helpful um, because if they come in and they have no college credit, they basically have to average 15 hours per semester to graduate in four years. Uh, if they come in with some dual enrollment credits uh, and throughout the state of Virginia, there's a, um, an agreement now with the community colleges, which has been wonderful. Uh, so the students can look at a class and pretty much any school in Virginia know if that's going to you know, count when they go to college. Uh, that can help them in terms of reducing maybe their course load, especially if it's their first semester and they're struggling with the workload. They could take 12 hours instead of 15. Another advantage of that specifically for Emory and Henry uh, is that at least in the education department, if students are able to come in with some dual enrollment credits, uh, it depends on the situation, but we have several students who can actually finish if they're wanting to go the teacher prep route, uh, they can finish in four years with their master's degree. Um, and so financially that helps them once they get out into a career, uh, they can already start out a higher salary than if they graduated with just a four year degree. Um, and then I'll real briefly, I was sort of watching the chat. Someone asked about um, athletics. Uh, let's see, I believe I saw something about uh, academic support for mm -hmm. athletes. Uh, so again, you know, with my son playing baseball and, and there may be other parents uh, that wanna speak to this, but I know at least depending on the sport, but football has study hall. Um, and I would say whether you're athletes or not, uh, one of the advantages of Emory is the overwhelming support that you get from professors, uh, from the Powell Resource Center to support students. Um, I have a brother-in-law that graduated from Emory who was dyslexic and swears he would never have gotten his you know, college degree if it hadn't been for the wonderful support systems there. Uh, and then I think there was one other question in the chat about advising. Uh, and then with the advising, I think that the way that we have it set up is really important because students can't register for classes until they've met with their advisors. So we try to be very hands-on and where I'm a faculty member, that's one of my favorite parts is to sit down and talk to students about their classes. And that also gives us an opportunity to talk with them about their long-term career goals. Thank you guys. So one question we have is, do you find that there's plenty to do for the students? Because based on, you know, on paper, looking at us on MapQuest, Google, we do seem kind of isolated. I'm gonna jump in and say that, you know, Janae um, only got to stay on campus for about, you know, about the fall semester of her freshman year and then to spring break of that freshman year. And then of course COVID hit, but she stayed active and what we really enjoyed was even though we aren't that far away 40 45 minutes away we didn't want her coming home i'm a former director of housing and so i mean we, we wanted her to stay on campus and get the weekend experiences so there was plenty to do and uh i think that students will find that they find their own little social groups and their little cliques, you know, that they hang out with. And it's a positive thing. So um, she went to soccer games. She went to some ball games. And so, um, and, and speaking events and uh, arts events. So plenty to do um, on, the on the campus proper. And then the campus is not that far away. If your student has a car, and even if they don't, um, they tend to befriend folks who have vehicles who are willing to um, uh, let them go along for adventures outside of the campus. So there's um, Abington, which is a more thriving um, little cute little town and it has the Barter Theater, which the college has a wonderful agreement where the students as a part of their, it's a colloquial um, experience can um, utilize their experiences going there to meet an important requirement that the college has for students to engage in cultural experiences. So uh, the barter is always having wonderful plays and then Bristol, Tennessee is not that far away. Um, and there's all the things you would um, look for in, in a small city. It's a small city, but it is a little city. So um, I think the students find ways. And then there's the great outdoors, which Jim can probably speak to 
far more eloquently than I can, because um, that's not my my thing that I get out and do a lot. But there, this area is just gorgeous, and there are many I know of hiking trails and things like that. But I'll hush and let Jim take over. So yeah, so right. I work in student life, and so there, are, you know, many programs, uh, you know, that are rich and you know, offer so many, you know, different things for students to do. And of course I'm invested in the uh, outdoors. So there are three programs within the outdoor program. There's uh, a, a trail that's, a, a program that's unique to Emory and Henry and it's called the semester trail. And, you know, so students who are interested in hike, you know, doing a long distance hike and getting credit for it. We, you know, again, a small college, can do some pretty uh, amazing things. You know, big ideas become powerful realities here. So uh, we were able to take, uh, you know, I, I think this says a lot about the institution. And, and uh, even if you're here like, well, my, 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 my child's not very outdoorsy. I, I still think this speaks to the, you know, uh, the institution. Uh, you know, again, we, the, the college builds academic semesters around a long distance hike, whether it's a 500 mile hike on the Appalachian Trail or you know an attempted through hike, which is 2000 miles. So you won't find another college that'll do that. So that's one program we have. We have uh, an adventure team that is, uh, you know, it's by interview only and there's a, there's a scholarship attached to it. And that's uh, adventure athletes, uh, rock climbers and uh, whitewater paddlers and hikers and backpackers. But then we also, I mean, really, Emory is an outdoor college in the sense that we are nestled in this amazing place. I mean, we're 14 miles from the Appalachian Trail, the rivers, trails in every direction. And so, if, you know, as a student at this college, there are trips and events that are available to you, period. No, no extra fees. You know, we have an indoor climbing facility. There will be... Uh, rafting trips and hiking trips and uh, biking on the Virginia Creeper Trail, which is a rails to trail, one of the more famous rails to trail uh, uh, bike riding opportunities in the country. So, you know, so there's really, you know, some outdoor experience for every student. Uh, but again, uh, I, that's a little bit about the outdoors. I'm happy to answer any specific questions or follow up with someone. But I also want to speak to some of the uh, advising piece, because I saw a question about advising. Um, I, I've taught in the, uh, the the Gen Ed program, which which we call uh, Core here, and uh, you know, as a, as a parent, I was certainly uh, again, I was I was already integrated in this program, but it's something that I just love to talk about, and that's the all of the professors for the first year course, which is Core One Hundred here, are also the students' advisors. So so I'm so I'm going to speak from the perspective of, of you know, a first year advisor. Uh, I see that student, you know, if it's a Tuesday, Thursday class, twice a week, three times a week, if it's Monday, Wednesday, Friday, first, uh, you know, again, you know, first year student, I'm, I, I'm that student's advisor, you know, so, you know, I don't, I don't think it's possible to advise a student very well if you don't know that student. And so Emory and Henry is all about bonds and getting to know students and it creates that kind of uh, environment. And so, you know, you know, moving through that first semester and getting to know that student, I, you know, I've just had the best experience uh, in that advising role. And, and, I, and again, I just wanted to communicate that. I think that is a mechanism that just bodes well for that student academic experience. I'll, I'll piggyback onto that one, Jim. So one of the things that, and it goes back to Tracy's first question, what do you wish you, you knew then that you know now? Um, I did not know when my daughter first started here how important and special those connections between faculty and students was um, until I became a parent and became an employee working here. And it's, it's neat to see the connections that are formed there and it's like nothing to be walking on campus and have a student holler at a you know faculty member and say hello or carry on a conversation and they really get to know your your child as a person um, which ties in nicely with the advising piece of it because they they do have their best interest at heart and they know how to direct them to the resources that we have on campus to help them succeed 
And I was not aware of that as a parent when my daughter first started here. And now having used those resources as a parent, I can't recommend them enough. So I, any opportunity I get to refer people um, to the PRC, to the Career Services Center, anything like that, that they can take advantage of, I highly recommend it because I've seen what a difference it makes um, from having an undecided student come in, to taking those assessments to really getting that good advising to get into the classes that she needed to when she needed to, and just watching her blossom and grow into this young adult that kind of has a vision now for what she wants to do. And I, I, I can't tell you enough how special that is to see um, as a parent for your child to develop those connections with their faculty members here. Yeah, I, I would just echo that. And my daughter now being in her third year in a major, the physics, um, which is a smaller major, the relationships that she has with her professors is amazing. Um, I, I saw one of the questions about, is there any trouble getting classes? If there's ever an issue with conflicts in schedule or class issues, um, it's always been able to be worked out. Um, through the whole COVID and, um, you know, my, we're, we live eight hours away and just the struggle with everything. Um, and she did the first seven weeks of semester online. Um, she is, has an incredible relationship with her professors now, um, can reach out to them. Um, and I think that the small school setting compared to what I saw my son go through at a big university um, makes the world of difference for them. I did see there's a specific question for me about the equestrian program, if it's okay if I jump in and answer that one. So the question, I'm not sure if everyone's seen the questions is, um, how welcoming did I find the program and teams to the riders who might not be at the top levels of riding example rated shows? So um, if you have a child who rides, um, you know that the horse world can be a crazy um, world um, for those kids. And um, there are a lot of very mean horse people out there. I can tell you that the equestrian program here at Emory and Henry um, is an amazing program. It, um, they are the least bit exclusive. Um, everyone is absolutely welcome. Um, there are about 70 members on the team. Um, and the nice thing about college riding, different from riding outside of college, is they need riders at all level. And frankly, where we struck, where they seem to struggle the most getting riders are the very entry level riders because because a lot of the um, riders have been riding for years. So there is definitely um, room for everyone and everyone is um, very welcome. Um, my daughter has made some amazing friendships with the people on the equestrian team. And I've not once ever had the concern that I've had at other times being at horse shows about people being exclusive or the mean girl syndrome, those types of things. So it's, it's a very welcoming environment. Somebody had asked a question about uh, the remote learning or not, and I will say my daughter has been remote this, um, since they went home in March, um, and then she's been home this whole semester, and she's a musical theater major. So just to tell you just how supportive this whole group is, I mean, she's been taking vocal um, classes remotely. She's been taking um, ballet remotely. She has put on a play remotely because they're doing a theater festival right now and she's getting ready to do a dance um, number that they're doing remotely. Um, but they they have worked with everybody there. The dance piece that she's doing right now, she's actually the only one who's not on campus, but they're making sure that everybody is included and a part of it and everything else. Um, she's actually even this week, she's rushing a sorority and so she's still involved. She's still doing all the things. Um, she was a student instructor this semester. So um, she's just very involved still as if she was there. Of course, she she really wants to be there and she plans to be back. But um, but she has she has not missed a beat in any way by being at home and, and the school and the professors. Nobody thought anything of it that she was you know sitting at home versus being there. So it was great. Thank you all. Uh, one of the other parts of that question is preparing to accommodate students the incoming class for 2021 should they be impacted by COVID. So if you're referring to more financial aid side of that question, 
we do have special circumstances through our financial aid office. So just as a tidbit for financial aid, if what you're looking at income wise for 2020 does not match what 2019 looked like, we do have extenuating circumstances and appeals that you can file with our financial aid office. And we are taking those into consideration because we 100% understand that this situation has impacted everybody in a different way, whether you got, whether you're laid off or you lost your job. Um, so you can go through that appeals process with our financial aid office. And also, as a member of the COVID committee that we have here on campus that meets regularly, like twice and two and three times a week, um, as far as delivery of the academic material, our faculty have just been heroic in the effort that they have undertaken to switch from in-person to online classes, literally at, at the drop of a hat if we need to. And the way that they have prepared the material I've never seen anything like it before. I've, I've went to college you know, and done in-person plus online learning myself and just seeing the faculty and what they have done is awesome. I mean, they, they put just as much or more thought into the online delivery as they do the in-person delivery and the creativity and how flexible they are with the students and they're working with students if students have to get a job because that was one of the things that we saw is a lot of times the student um, left campus and they were helping support their their parents or watching younger siblings as they um, are doing online school for for kids for a lot of times and and the way that the faculty is working with them is unbelievable so proud of them so proud of them yeah I completely agree with that Tracy um, my daughter all of my daughter's classes were live zoom classes but they were also recorded by the professor so it allowed her to while she was home those first seven weeks um, to work um, and still be able to go to school. Um, so it was a great experience for her um, to be able to do that. So being stuck at home was not quite as tragic as it otherwise might have been for her. Let's speak if any of your students have utilized the PRC Counseling Tutoring Center and then the ID Center. Our daughter has volunteered in her time in, um, at the ID Center and has loved that opportunity to help um, coordinate efforts around diversity, equity, and inclusion. Um, the students and the staff there help plan programs and activities that reach out to all students. Anyone is welcome to participate and engage, but of course, um, many of those programs are around different affinity and cultural groups um, to expose the whole campus community to what it means to have an inclusive and excellent environment. So with, I'll just, I'll speak on the PRC. So with our PRC center, they offer counseling and tutoring opportunities for all of our students. Um, it's at no additional cost to the student. Uh, tutoring is available for any course. A lot of our tougher courses will already have a tutor set up with regular office hours. Um, but if a student does have a particular class they may be struggling in, tutoring is still available. But then that also being said, if a student takes a course and does really well in it, they can volunteer to be a tutor for that class in later semesters. Um, one of the other questions we have is about study abroad. Just as a general, has anybody's student taken a study abroad trip? Janae's working on an application now for a program that is not with Emory and Henry, I don't believe, but it's um, a Frederick Douglass um, program. But uh, I anticipate that she will do some kind of travel abroad. Uh, she's expressed interest in that. But um, there's a particular nationwide program with uh, students uh, from minority groups, basically, that. Um, would have an opportunity through this Frederick Douglass uh, program. But it uh, seems like you could take short-term, long-term, 
uh, summer semesters, uh, quite versatile. And for Janae, she needed probably a shorter term experience since she was triple majoring. Uh, it, it worked with her schedule to try to find something that was for a couple of weeks or so. But Emory does offer um, those experiences through the college. And I think this particular program, one of her faculty members actually saw it and sent it to her. So that's another example of how their students develop those close relationships with the faculty. The faculty learn really what their career objectives and goals are and um, their areas of interest and then really try to um, expose to students and provide them with the uh, opportunities to dive deeper into their areas of interest. So there are definitely travel abroad experiences. I think some in some cases students can um, utilize scholarship dollars and um, financial aid to help offset the cost of those experiences. I think like most institutions, um, some faculty do faculty-led study abroad um, experiences for the students. And then there are others where they have connected with, um, what are they called, uh, um, the um, groups um, from other institutions that are sending students to travel. And if, well, it may not be an Emory and Henry faculty member on the trip, they are with a wonderful, uh, well-vetted faculty member who was able to um, lead them on that experience and make sure they're meeting the learning objectives set forth. Yeah, I could speak to that uh, study abroad experience a bit too. My, my son, Miles, who's a junior, was scheduled to, uh, right, he, he was supposed to go to Japan for the spring 2021 uh, spring semester, but uh, Right, it was it was uh, postponed. So, but the the program here has been really communicative with him, and you know because I was you know obviously you know that he 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 was really excited to you know to engage that that experience, and so they've been working with him uh, constantly to you know you know update him on you know when when the program will be available, which you know now there's a there's a a shortened summer option, and, and there's also an option for the following semester. And again, one of the best things about a small college uh, in Emory and Henry is that, you know, again, we can, uh, the college works with the student. So, you know, again, it was going to be work out ideal in, you know, in the middle of his junior year, but, the, but already his professors and, you know, Dr. Guy, who runs a study abroad program, has, has already worked it out so that he will still be able to have that experience. Uh, I've also had students, uh, I honor students and, and, and other students who, you know, uh, met with me to talk about options for, and, you know, you know, including some kind of, a, you know, outdoor adventure in their study abroad. And so I've had students uh, engage the Knowles program, which is the National Outdoor uh, Leadership School. And they've, you know, I've had students go to Nepal and trek in the Himalayas as part of the Knowles program. And that work as a study abroad. I've had students go to the Amazon basin and uh, trek and paddle all around the Amazon. And again, work out those, all that coursework, uh, both in-house and, you know, within the, the program at Knowles to uh, get the appropriate credits and, and uh, get the students on track to graduate. Uh, we had one student who wanted a, a big outdoor adventure uh, on his way to study abroad in France. And so we worked out an opportunity for him uh, to uh, complete the Great Pyrenees Trail uh, in the uh, Alps. So, you know, again, I can't speak enough about what a small college can do and 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 how Emory and Henry works with the students to make, you know, they're for, for a, a driven student, a, a goal-oriented student, there's really, you know, it's not a whole lot of limits. I have another question and this joy you may be the one to answer this what is the adjustment like for students who live far away um hmm i mean it my daughter didn't have any trouble with the adjustment i think it probably depends on um the student i think that there is um a ton of things to become immersed in at the college um 
I don't know this for a fact, but I think just based on my experience and maybe those of you who work there can tell me, but I believe that most of the students who attend Emory are um, participating in either some type of sport or some type of other thing like the outdoor or cheering or uh, the theater. They all seem to be connected to something and that really creates an instant group of um, individuals for the students to be connected with. Um, so I think that really helps in the transition um, for them from being so far away. Thank you. Shelby's, Shelby's three hours away. So she did not mm. come home until fall break. Um, and that was, there was no option. She didn't have a car for somebody else who asked earlier if there was a car necessary. She did not have a car the whole first year. And she was required to go to the barter theater several times this each semester. She found her way, <laughs> she figured it out. But that's part of adulting. She's got to figure that out. Um, but um, she she had absolutely no problem adjusting and finding people. I mean, her she has great friends in the theater department, but some of the people she hangs out with um, aren't even in the theater department. So um, it, it really doesn't matter. It's, it's just everybody's Emory and you know, she just has friends. It's just you know, everybody hangs out and does their thing and it, it's all everyone's welcoming. Uh, my daughter was horribly bullied all the way through uh, school and she actually one of the reasons why she picked Emory is because she didn't know anybody at Emory and it was her chance to start over um, and she was welcomed from the day she got there and she she loves being there and she she hates that she's home right now <laughs> but um it she there was absolutely no 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 adjustment period no nothing and she she doesn't like even having to come home for breaks because she wants to be there so i don't i don't think many children many kids are going to have any problem adjusting to being there marcy i just want to add to what you said where you said it's just emory when we took our tour, uh, when we came down um, and took the tour, and we they sent, we were allowed to go to lunch and where you guys where the lunch is served, and it just kind of struck me ironic or odd. I don't even know if it was really odd, but almost all the students were wearing something that said Emory and Henry, mm -hmm. um, and I just that was really unusual to me. And I thought, do they do this when they know people are coming so that everyone's wearing Emory and Henry stuff? But it's not. I mean, it's that is the way the campus is. And I think that they, I think the students identify as Emory and Henry students, we're the WASPs and we're Emory and Henry. And um, which I think also definitely helps with, it's a community, um, you know, and it's a small community. My daughter came from a high school twice the size of Emory. Um, mm -hmm. But, um, you know, it, I think that close knitness comes from being so small and just the pride that you you know uh, when you're when you're there you know the pride that they all have for the school, right? Yeah, if I could you know say this, I'm I mean you know I, I've been working here a long time, and so my students grew up in this environment. I mean they you know just spent their whole whole life coming up to Emory and Henry, and so, uh, my wife and I and, and really our, our friends and everybody really encouraged our students to go to other colleges, <laughs> like you know get out of here, go go have another experience, and you know and really it. Uh, at some point in high school, right, you know, they were like, absolutely, I don't want to be anywhere near my father, or, you know, I, I need to get out of here, you know, I need to get out of this small town, and this, this little bird, and, and, but really, the closer, you know, it, it you know, as, as the time <laughs> gap closed, more and more, they started saying, you know, I, as I tour other colleges, I really don't want to go anywhere else, but Emory, because I can't find that experience anywhere. I can't find the kind of relationships. I can't find the familial just energy and feel. And, you know, again, they, they all took du dual enrollment courses. Uh, so they, they were already connected in a way that they just couldn't find other places, even though we try to run them off. Uh, they, uh, we just couldn't, you know, and so they were very committed to Emory, though they had many, many other. Joy, I would like to add that admissions is behind the scenes coordinating all of that. And we we, we set all of that up to make sure that it's 100% Emory and Henry when students <laughs> visit. It definitely was. And every time I've been there, it is. So um, I, I think I can answer the question for the person who asked about the equine studies major. Um, even though my daughter's not an equine studies major, um, the Emory and Henry equine studies major is one of the top 
ones um, in the country. Uh, there is a classroom right at the barn where um, most of the classes take place. Um, there is, uh, I know there's a veterinarian who's one of the professors um, along with the coaches for the IHSA and the IDA team. Um, as an equestrian at Emory and Henry, whether you're just on the team or you're an equestrian studies major, you do take a riding class. Um, and so you're riding either two days a week or three days a week based on whether it's Monday, Wednesday, Friday, or Tuesday, Thursday. And then there's also the opportunity to just go out and ride whenever you want. Um, there's a list of horses that need to be ridden. Um, so if you have a student who is an equestrian, I can tell you my daughter wears her um, breeches. That's what she walks around campus in. Um, it's, it's very normal for that. Um, and she rides I would say she rides um, probably four to five days a week, at least one to two horses a day. So it's an incredible experience as an equestrian, whether you come there as an equestrian major or just come um, as a member of the team. I don't know if anybody is going to know this one, Tracy Peary, you might, um, the percentage of students receiving in-person classes versus virtual. I can't remember where we're at at this point. Yeah, so what we did is we did a phased mm -hmm. retreat approach when we came back on campus. So we brought back a smaller group of freshmen um, students because we really wanted them to have that first year experience because it's so important to our students to have that experience and know what it's like to have that Emory uh, residential experience here and on campus experience. Um, in addition to the first year students, we also brought back students that needed um, like hands on like uh, science laboratory classes in order to graduate and stuff like that. So we brought in a very small group, probably 250, 350. I think it's more like 350 is when we actually brought back that first group. And we have grown that throughout the second seven week um, period. So we're up to about 450, 500 students right now. And then we have plans to go bigger um, for spring semester. So again, we're keeping the safety of our students first and foremost above anything else. That is primarily what we're looking at. It's the safety of our students, faculty and staff. And so the more that we can bring back the safest way is what we're gonna be doing with that. So we probably have about five more minutes before we will close this out. If anybody has any other questions or if any of our current e h parents have anything else you would like to add, um, any tidbits of information advice you would like to pass on to our prospective parents. I would just add um, in closing, I think Emory is an amazing institution. Uh, it's small and uh, it allows your student to be a big fish in a small pond. Um, they can really have their hands involved in lots of different things and get engaged and involved and they can't fly under the radar. Um, their faculty know them. They know where, whether they show up, they know how, whether they're engaged, they can tell when things are up with them and they care. Um, it's probably some of the most caring and um, engaged faculty that I've seen. And I worked at Appalachian State, I worked at Middle Tennessee State <clears throat> University, I worked at um, Cleveland State Community College. So I've been at different institutions and those places have amazing faculty as well. But because of the size of Emory, I see a difference. There is a difference, size makes a difference. So um, I would strongly recommend it. Um, Again, I think let your student lead the efforts, um, follow their heart. Um, we've had our opportunities, it's their turn now. So let them lead that effort. And wherever they end up, make sure your student gets involved and engaged. That makes all the difference in the world. When students are involved and engaged in one to two outside things at least, their likelihood of persisting through graduation increases greatly. And um, I've worked in student affairs most of my career. So I share that tip of information just wherever they go, that needs to be something where you're having those conversations. Well, what's happening on your campus? If they say nothing, that's a lie. 
I don't care what institution they're going to, there's something going on. And it's easy for you as a parent to find out, get on the website and check it out and make recommendations, but your student needs to be engaged and involved. Best of luck to you and your families if you make this important decision. Emory is an amazing place. I would add that as parents, I would hope that you would encourage your students. We have with both of our daughters to, after that first week or two of being a student, wherever they go, and we hope it's Emory, but wherever they go, that they find a time to go meet with their faculty members really, you know, that first couple of weeks and make sure that they know who they are, not just pulling up, you know, right to them right after class, but going and sitting with them in their office and making that connection. And once they know who they are, they will forever have uh, acquired a friend and a colleague that will help them. And they're going to do that anyway, but it's important that those students take that extra step to do that. So, whether they end up at Emory or not, do that, please. I'll say one other thing. Um, you know, it's neat as a parent and as an employee here too, is the way that we are transitioning over to the world of work here and really engaging our students in that and transitioning them to be productive employees when they graduate, no matter what their major is. And that focus has been so neat to see. It's really a strategic focus for the college and being able to transition over to the world of work. And everything we do has the future of that student um, in mind. So that's such a comfort as a parent to know that even after my daughter and soon to be son um, will come here and they graduate and become alumni of the college, they still are going to have resources here as alumni where they can contact people here at the college that will help them um, transition into the world of work. And we do have student employment opportunities for students here as well. And that's that's neat from the role that I'm in and get to meet the different students and work with them um, in the jobs that they pick here on campus. So it's it's neat to be able to have kind of the parent view plus the employee view of it. Um, but I, I cannot recommend Emory enough from a parent perspective um, just to see the growth. And, and my daughter participated in the outdoor adventure team with Jim and just seeing the bonds that that team develops with other students and having that opportunity for them to engage and like you've mentioned getting involved and we see emails as employees of all the weekend activities or the week activities that our area coordinators are putting together for students it's amazing and I've sent them notes saying can I participate in that as an employee because they're just fun I mean there's so much going on on campus there's never a dull moment um, here on campus and I just I can't encourage your student enough to to come to Emory and look forward to meeting them. One thing I would add that if your student, if you do become parents of a student at Emory and Henry is to make sure if you do have social media that you get yourself connected to the Instagram and the Facebook page. Um, I feel like I know what's happening on, on the Emory and Henry camp campus every day, even though I'm eight hours away um, to the point where I follow even different sports teams that my daughter's not not on just to kind of see how things are going. Um, so I always know what's happening um, and it really makes me feel connected even though, you know, I, I don't get the opportunity to get there as much as I would if I was closer. All right, well, thank you all again. Thank you everybody. Thank you to our current parents for just taking the time this afternoon to answer questions and be a good, as we always are at Emory and Henry, be a good support group for each other. Um, I will say that I'm glad that I'm not the only one. My five-year-old, I ask her when she comes home from kindergarten, you know, what'd you do today? Oh, nothing. I'm like, you had to do something. <laughs> so I'm glad that it doesn't change as they get older. Um, but for our prospective parents, if you do have any questions or your students have any questions as you go through this process, please feel free to reach out to any of us, reach out to the admissions office. We are 110% here for both of you getting through this process, um, no matter where they are at in their high school career. Um, but thank you all again, and I hope everyone has a good evening.